Hello, YouTube world. I want to talk to you a little bit about the rigged world of sports. And in particular, I want to talk to you about the Australian Open Tennis Tournament and a little bit about the NFL playoffs. And the Australian Open Tennis Tournament is still going on. Um, it's early morning Friday in the United States, and they're actually playing uh, the second sem men's semifinal match, about to finish it. And so what you're looking at right here, uh, this was a graphic from a couple nights ago. I happened to turn on the TV set and catch this, and it was, you know, early morning, or maybe this was actually about 10 o'clock at night, I can't remember, but Novak Djokovic was playing in the quarterfinals. He won, and they flashed this graphic that he had a 33-match win streak at the Australian Open. And I thought, you know, I really think he'll probably lose his next match. At the time, I was thinking, boy, he's stuck on that 33 number. I'll bet he loses his next match. And, uh, you know, it, it was interesting. He's, he's on that 33 number. And then um, that same night, I think this was Tuesday night, um, I happened to, uh, you know, catch the tail end of this Djokovic match in the quarterfinals. I think he's playing an American, Taylor Fritz, and this is his interview right after the match. Let's have a listen to this. This is really interesting what he said. So, by the way, a little background on this. Uh, apparently, uh, this is well known with tennis fans that every year at the Australian Open, uh, Novak Djokovic has this tree in Australia. It's in the Botanical Gardens, whatever that is, a park. And he goes to this tree and spends a lot of time meditating, uh, you know, under this tree or doing whatever. But he has this fascination uh, with this tree in the Royal Botanical Gardens. And, you know, anyone that knows anything about tennis, Novak Djokovic has won 24 majors. That's the record. Uh, he's tied with Margaret Court for most of any man or woman. And he's won the Australian Open 10 times. That's a record. And, of course, trees are very prominent in witchcraft. Uh you may notice the Golden State Warriors uh, will wear a jersey. Boy, I forgot to pull that up. But the Golden State Warriors will wear a jersey sometimes where they have a tree uh, as the logo. So, But let's go ahead and play uh, this full video again. Okay, did you catch what he said there? Let's play that one more time. Point and hang upside down on one of the highest branches for 33 minutes and, and 3 seconds. Upside down on one of the highest branches for 33 minutes and, and 3 seconds. Upside down. For 
So, uh, and by the way, the man interviewing Djokovic was is Nick Kyrgios. He's a famous Australian tennis pra- player, uh, pro tennis player, uh, still playing, but he's injured. I think he's got an is- wrist injury or something. So he's not playing in this tournament, but he's so he's doing media work, doing some of the television hosting and interviews. And uh, so he's asking Djokovic about this infamous tree that he goes to, that he goes to, that he apparently gets these powers from. And he's saying he's injured. You know, he needs to go visit this tree. So Djokovic is saying, "Well, I'll take you the tree, uh, but you can't tell anyone." And he says, "The secret is." You've got to hang upside down on the highest branch for 33 minutes and 3 seconds. So he says the secret is you've got to hang upside down on the highest branch of the tree for 33 minutes and 3 seconds. What would be the odds of Djokovic saying that when he just had had won his 33rd consecutive uh, match at the Australian Open? What would be the odds of that? That Djokovic has just won his 33rd straight uh, match at the Australian Open. Then he's doing this interview and says, you've got to hang upside down on the tree for 33 minutes and 3 seconds. You know, um, no coincidences. To me, very much rubbing it in our faces. Um, You know, I think very likely uh, telling us uh, that you're looking at a couple Masons there. I can't tell you that definitively, but we know that number 33. So uh, I I thought that was quite interesting. Something else to point out. Um, Let me try and get a good image here. So I know there's a tree. Because I'm sick of you winning. I need to get help. Is, you know, you see Nick Kyrgios wearing a Chicago Bulls hat. Uh, you know, this is an Australian. Why would he be a Bulls fan? You know, with the, the bull representing the Baphomet, representing Moloch. Um you know, the Bulls have had a crappy team for a while. They haven't had a decent team probably at least 15 years. I, I'm not sure on this, but they really haven't gone anywhere in the playoffs, and probably it's been at least 15 years. They've not won a championship since 98, uh, you know, when Michael Jordan was still playing with them. So, you know, why is this Australian player wearing a Chicago Bulls hat? We're going to look at that a little bit more in a moment. So this was a couple nights ago. It caught my attention. Novak Djokovic wins his 33rd consecutive match at the Australian Open. He's he's you know doing this interview saying you've got to hang upside down on this this magical tree for 33 minutes. Um, you know there's this infamous story about him and this tree in Australia. And you know some of you may have researched and are aware that trees are common in 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 witchcraft and rituals involving witchcraft. Uh, you can take some time to look up for yourself. You know, the Golden State Warriors have a kind of an alternate jersey they wear with uh, like a willow tree as the logo. I've talked about that in other videos before. So fast forward to tonight, uh, the semifinals, and Djokovic loses. Here we see the headline uh, on ESPN.com. Sinner ends Djokovic's 33-match Aussie Open win streak to reach the final. And the guy that beat him, his name is Sinner, his last name, Yannick Sinner. That's interesting in and itself. You know, the guy's name is Sinner. Probably not a coincidence uh, right now where we're at in the world that one of the top tennis players in the world who now is kind of dethroning Djokovic, his name is Sinner. So we know that Djokovic had a 33-match win streak at the Australian Open. He actually hadn't lost uh, it in, in the Australian Open since 2018. We, we see here, um, here's a list of Australian Open champions. And you'll see uh, Djokovic has won every year from 2018 to currently besides 2022. Now keep in mind that was the year he was deported 
uh, from Australia over the whole one niner juice thing. And I talked about that a little bit on, on this channel. You may remember that it was a it was a big story that uh, they wouldn't let him play in the Australian Open that year because of all of Australia's rules, and they literally deported him from the country because he had not drank in the juice, and they were only allowing people to enter the country mm -hmm. that had had the juice. So you see here uh, that that year Nadal won when Djokovic was deported, but Djokovic last loss in the Australian Open in 2018. That, you know, that's noteworthy because that's another, uh, you know, occult number, the, the number six. So we see now in 2024, it's been six years since he lost. So Djokovic loses the center tonight, and they've got that 33 displayed all over the place. He had won 33 straight matches at the Australian Open. And we see some more numbers to look at. We see uh, Djokovic lost his first set in a semifinal uh, at the Australian Open since losing his semifinal set to Federer in 2016. Uh, so he had had a 13, uh, he had won 13 straight sets in the semifinal round of the Australian Open. There's that number 13. Mm -hmm. You know, they make it a point to put that 13 out there, that Djokovic had won 13 straight sets in the semifinal round of the, of the Australian Open until tonight. Then they put the 18 out there, the 666 number. Djokovic loses his first match in his last 18 versus top five opponents at Australian Open. Uh, the last time he lost... Um, his last loss to a top five opponent of the Australian Open was against Federer back in 2007. So first loss against a top five opponent at the Australian Open in his last 18. 18, you're 666. 6 plus 6 plus 6, 6 times 3. Notice you've also got some 18s up here. You know, you've got the three. The, the, they're talking about the next semifinal match, which is wrapping up right now. The three seed versus the six seed. There's your 18, three times six. Here's another 18, 11 plus seven. That's another 18. Six, 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 six. And once again, they just keep blasting this 33 number. Djokovic breaks 33 match Australian Open win streak. And we just looked at that. That was the headline on ESPN. And, you know, this is kind of interesting. Um, so the guy who beat Djokovic tonight, his name is Yannick Sinner uh, in Italian. You know, his name's Sinner. And uh, so there's another tennis player from Australia. He just lost the quarterfinals, I believe, named Alex D. Menor, and they call him the Demon. And here we see Brad Gilbert, the famous American tennis coach. He's coaching Coco Goff right now, who just got beaten in the semifinals of the women's draw. And he was the coach of, uh, I believe, Andre Agassi for years when, when Agassi was winning majors. Uh, Brad Gilbert, really famous tennis coach and tennis guru. And we see here, what a fifth set from Rubles. That's a Russian player, Rublev, taking out the little demon. And there we see demon. And that is the name for the Australian player, Alex D. Menor. So... It's kind of interesting here in 2024, you know, arguably the best tennis player in the world right now is called Sinner, and another uh, top 10 player is called The Demon. You know, I, just, I find that kind of interesting. Probably, you know, not a coincidence. And uh, so the other semifinal match going on right now between Daniil Medvedev and Alexander Zverev, you know, it's worth pointing out uh, Zverev, who is the number six seed, you know, he's uh, got a court date coming up and a trial for domestic abuse. I don't really know anything about that, but they've been talking about that. Uh, Zverev is one of the best tennis players in the world, and he's going to have to uh, face apparently a trial over domestic abuse uh, allegations. This also caught my attention. Um, I think this was uh, this may have been two nights ago as well. I just happened to catch this, turn it on the TV set. Uh, this is I don't know if this is a coach or a family member of Daniil Medvedev. Um, 
So Medvedev is the third seeded player in the third ranked player in the world, uh, and he was getting beat by Zverev in this second semifinal that's going on right now. But this man right here, I don't know if this is a coach of his or a family member, was in his kind of player box. And notice he's wearing the Chicago Bulls uh, logo as well. Isn't that strange? You know, we see Nick Kyrgios, an Australian tennis player, born raised in Australia, wearing a Chicago Bulls hat. And then we see uh, this, I don't know if it's a coach or family member of Daniil Medvedev, who's a Russian. So this is a Russian man wearing a Chicago Bulls hat. Uh, I, I think it's kind of odd, you know. Um, why would they be such big Chicago Bulls fans? Or does this maybe have something to do with the Baphomet with Warship of Moloch? Can't tell you definitively, but... Um, I find it pretty interesting that the Chicago Bulls are such a popular team with these guys. And so then I want to mention uh, one thing quickly about the NFL playoffs. Um, I know I've had a couple commenters ask me about Super Bowl picks, and I've not looked at this enough to give you an educated pick. Uh, I've not spent a lot of time looking at the NFL this year, but... I did find this interesting, so uh, I've noticed numerous people that kind of follow uh, the sports world and know that it's rigged, so they're not, you know, they're not fanboys. They know this is all rigged. They look at the numbers, have been talking about a Baltimore-San Francisco Super Bowl. This is a graphic that's kind of been making the rounds online. So we look at the Super Bowl two years ago. Look at the colors and the logos. So this was the Super Bowl two years ago that was in L.A. And look, you've got the orange and yellow, and the Bengals and the Rams play. The Bengals have the orange color, the Rams have the yellow, matching the logo. Last year, of course, you had the Eagles and Chiefs play, the Chiefs winning, and the Super Bowl logo, look, you had green and red. Green color for Eagles, red for Chiefs. Well, this year's Super Bowl logo, notice that you've got red and purple you know that would fit the Niners have the red color the B Ravens have the purple color could we be looking at a San Francisco Baltimore Super Bowl I don't know I think that's most likely I thought that was interesting maybe there's a trend here uh, with the colors in the Super Bowl logo and who is being you know picked to play in it who it is rigged for and I said right when the season started, when that NFL script commercial came out, that I really believed the Chiefs would not win the Super Bowl this year. You can go back and watch that video, and a lot of you probably already seen that you know NFL commercial where they talk about the scripting and the acting, and they said that they were riding Mahomes out of the script this year. So, you know, if somehow the Chiefs win it, I'll I'll have to eat some crow on that. Maybe they're doing reverse psychology, but I kind of doubt it. I tend to think they were sending a message with the script saying they were writing Mahomes out of the script, and I tend to think they're probably uh, going to go with Baltimore in that game. So looking like probably most likely a Niners-Ravens Super Bowl, but we'll have to see. I just want to point that out. I thought that was interesting, that this trend that people are seeing with the colors and the Super Bowl logos and the teams that played in it the last three years. So I want to just play now a quick interview from tonight after Djokovic lost, what he had to say.
Okay, so I know the audio quality may not have been great on that. Basically, Djokovic was talking about how terrible he played and how it surprised him how terribly he came out and played. So I, I watched about 10 minutes of this match. Um, I turned on the TV and watched about 10 minutes, and I went to bed for a little while. I, I try to not watch much television. You know, I don't want to get caught up and spend time watching TV. But I do like to check it. I do like to try to keep up with things and keep, you know, my eye on the ball and my thumb on the pulse. So I saw about 10 minutes of the start of this match, and it did strike me how awful Djokovic was playing. He was hitting ball after ball into the net, ball after ball, wildly long and wide. And it did get my attention. I was thinking, boy, this looks really strange to me. It looked so strange to me that I did kind of wonder if Djokovic was throwing the match. So Djokovic was a very heavy favorite in this match, 2-1 to one favorite over Sinner. And from the 10 minutes I watched, Djokovic looked so uncharacter uncharacteristically bad, it did made me wonder, make me think, is he purposely throwing the match? He looked that bad. He was hitting a bunch of balls into the net. He was wildly, um, you know, off, uh, either hitting the ball long or right or left off the court. You know, and it kind of made me wonder, you know, is Djokovic purposely throwing this match? I, I don't know that, you know, maybe not. But, you know, we know these matches are rigged. And if he's not throwing it, then we know that there's something to do with the prince of the power of the air. You know, we read in the Bible, Satan is the prince of the power of the air, him and his fallen angels. So it is naive to think that Satan does not have the power to affect the movement of the ball and the location of the ball in these major sporting events. We've talked about that before. I don't know how all of this works all the time. I know there are coaches and players that are in on it that throw games. There are referees and umpires that throw games. And I do think that at times there is a supernatural element to it where Satan, the prince of the power of the air, does have an effect on the movement of the ball in some of these sporting matches. So I just want to show you a couple of images. I happen to come upon this. Look at Djokovic with the left eye symbolism. You know, the story here, serious question about Djokovic's left, Djokovic's left eye. I, I guess apparently they're trying to say he's got a droopy left eye. I never noticed that, but blatant satanic one eye symbolism. Then I came upon this image. You know, here are four different images of Djokovic giving you the Masonic Satanic one-eye symbolism. And so, you know, many people say that Djokovic is a member of the Serbian Orthodox Church. You'll often see him wearing crosses, wearing a cross when he plays. So I, I don't know. I don't know about Djokovic, what his beliefs are. Here we read in this article, Djokovic and his wife Jelena share New Age esoteric beliefs and together have visited the Bosnian Hills town of Visoko, where some believe that four hills shaped like pyramids offer healing powers, a claim disputed by scientists. So... <clears throat> Excuse me. Apparently his wife is in a new age. We just talked about the thing with Djokovic, the obsession with the train in Australia. I don't know. You know, it is. there's evidence, obviously, that he's a part of the Serbian Orthodox Church and is a Christian. Well, that doesn't mean much if you're a member of the church, you know. There are a whole lot of Catholics out there that aren't saved. So Djokovic, what's going on with him? I'm not sure. I'm very skeptical that he's a born-again, you know, spirit-filled believer, that he's saved and he's born again of spirit. I hope that he is, but I tend to doubt it. I tend to doubt anyone that has had that much success in Satan's world, in the world of sports, is a born-again, say, believer. I, I hope he is. I really hope he is, and we see him at the rapture, but... He's got the record for most major wins in tennis, and, it, you know, the way he's had a successful, you know, uh, career in marketing with all the fame. 
it makes me it makes it's hard for me to believe that a saved born again believer could have that much success in Satan's world. You never know. But I, I would tend to look at it's likely that he's an occultist and a mason, you know, just my view on it. Here we see Raphael on the Dolls logo. You know, the Dolls injured right now, but he's got the second most majors next to Djokovic with 22. And we see his logo, which they say is a bull because he's a Spaniard, right? The running the bulls, that's the explanation they give. But we see how closely it resembles the Baphomet and Moloch, you know, the horn god Satan, Mendez. So blatantly satanic. And I've talked about this in the past with Roger Federer, who's now retired. Here's an example of a jacket he used to wear around. You notice a cobra snake. And more importantly, 13 beams of light coming out of it. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. No coincidence there. Roger Federer wearing a jacket with a massive snake cobra and 13 beams of light coming out of it for the 13 satanic Illuminati bloodlines. So, you know, just because these are guys are tennis players doesn't mean they're not part of, you know, the Masons and part of this whole NWO plan. You know, all these sports are rigged, and that's why I'm making this video, is to make it clear to you that all these sports are rigged. And most all of these guys, at least most of them, are in on this, okay? and are involved in masonry and satanism at least a good portion of them <clears throat> so let me give you an example of one guy that might not be i sure hope he is and let's play a clip from cj strad the texans quarterback some of you may have seen this how they censored him and would not play the wording of him giving glory to jesus christ C has edited and censored CJ Stroud and people are furious. So CJ always starts each interview the same way, thanking Jesus. But NBC decided to edit that part out and push it on all their social media accounts. This is what he actually said. First of all, I just want to give all glory and praise my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I mean, it's been amazing. And this is the way they edited the clip. So what does this moment mean? I mean, it's been amazing being in this city for as short as I've been. But the this is a disgraceful act by NBC, and they need to do better. NBC So there we see NBC censoring uh, C.J. Stroud, blocking out the positive words about Jesus Christ, and I don't know about C.J. Stroud. I sure hope he is saved, and I thank my brother Spencer uh, for giving me uh, that clip. So, you know, C.J. Strand, I sure hope he is a born-again believer. That'd be fantastic, but I don't know. So just wanted to put that out there. And something definitely going on at the Australian Open, really rubbing that in our face, the 33-match win streak of Djokovic ending. You know, tennis is, is completely rigged like every other sport. So I just wanted to put that out there and drive home the point for some of you that may not know that all of these pro sports and college sports are rigged. And don't make sports an idol. I encourage you, don't waste your time with it. We're living in the end times. The rapture is coming any day now Then the tribulation period. What's most important now is that you, pay, you, you, you move your attention to Jesus Christ. You need to look to him. He's your only hope. He's your only savior. And if you're not saved, it is my prayer that the day would be the day of salvation for you. And it's really simple. You just need to believe in the finished work of Jesus Christ, what he's done for you, okay? All of us are sinners. We need a Savior. That's why Jesus Christ came to this earth. He shed his blood and he died to pay the price for all of our sins, past, present, future. You just must believe that truth to be saved, okay? You need to know that you're a sinner. You need a Savior. And believe the truth that Jesus Christ shed his blood to pay the price for all of your sins, that through his death, burial, and resurrection, you have forgiveness of all your sins and eternal life. And if you will believe that truth, you'll be sealed the Holy Spirit. All of your sins are forgiven. You have eternal life that you can never lose. And I pray that you would lay hold of salvation today in Jesus Christ's name. So let's just close in prayer right now. Father, in Jesus Christ's name, we thank you for salvation and every blessing. Lord, I pray this this video would move through the algos with no problem that anyone who needs to see this would see it. And I pray that anyone who hears this video and sees it would come to salvation in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. So 
God bless everybody, and Lord will, and I'll talk to you again real soon.